Today we are going to show you highly dangerous mega-scale experiments with thermite. For those of you who may not be familiar, thermite is a mixture of aluminium and metal oxide that, when ignited, produces extremely high temperatures and can even melt through metal. It is often used in welding. Our first experiment is going to be thermite versus watermelon. I am Thylabs and today I'm joined by Elias Experiments and Advanced Thinkering. Make sure to check out their channels as well. You can find a link in the description. As we carefully position the watermelon beneath our sophisticated setup, we lay it in a mixture of rough, followed by finely ground thermites, before finishing it off with a sprinkle of a mysterious powder and a splash of a strange liquid. We didn't have to wait long until the mixture ignited, sending a shower of sparks soaring through the air. You can see the reaction again, but from a different perspective. This is the breathtaking aftermath of our experiments. Despite the watermelon rolling down from its perch, the scene before us is a stunning sea of molten iron lava, simply mesmerizing. The melon unfortunately did not look edible anymore. We cooled down the glowing mass and below it we found a big blob of iron. Yeah, it was not too hot anymore, so we put it into some water. <laughs> it didn't glow, but it was still hot enough. I ended up taking the iron blob back home with me, etched it with hydrochloric acid, cleaned it off and it started to rust. It's still beautiful. Before we continue, I'll let you take a look at how we made the thermites. We first began by making a batch of about 18 kilograms of coarse thermites made from aluminum and iron oxide. The ignition mixture weighing about 2 kilograms total was made from fine aluminum powder and fine iron oxide. Next, we are going to try sugar because glucose can be seen as some solid form of water. This reaction looked absolutely stunning. As the sugar burned and melted, it produced this black stuff which looked like lava. The burning mass spread out damn fast. And it was hot. But this is to be expected, as you can see it's still burning. What was even more interesting is that our melting crucible was still cold. It was only 50 degrees celsius and this is because it's made from an insulating material. The carbon chunks were light as air because they were porous. Can you guess what this frozen and fuming stuff is? As you might have guessed, it's dry ice, frozen carbon dioxide. We want to see what happens when molten metal hits frozen carbon dioxide. Is it going to be interesting or boring? Well, there's only one way to find out. Molten metal splashed around and it made a lot of this brown smoke. This was cool, but you can barely compare it to what you're going to see later on. What was crazy was how much of the dry ice survived. It's just swimming on the molten metal. This is aluminium oxide containing a small amount of chromium-3 oxide. When you heat it up enough, you can actually make rubies using it and advanced thinking wanted to see if this would work with thermite. The mix was put into a bag, which was then placed inside of a layer of thermite. It splattered, made a lot of smoke, but did we succeed at making rubies? The mixture was red hot and after a few minutes we used a pair of pliers to pull out some of the lava. We assumed it was a solid block but we were proven wrong. As you can see it's very malleable. These chunks look promising because they had a slightly different color. So we kept them and let them cool down. 
Once it cooled down, we were left with this white substance, which had a slight purple color. Advanced Thinkering used the UV lights to shine it at it, but unfortunately, it did not look like we made any rubies. The next experiment is going to be frozen cyclohexane versus molten iron. It produced a massive fireball, something that looked like a tornado, and a massive black cloud of smoke. We hoped that nobody would call the fire department, because it looked like someone was burning tires or something else. Before telling you why we did all of this and also showing you the most dangerous experiment, I would like to thank today's sponsor Brilliant.org. Brilliant is the best learning platform for learning about science, math and so much more. They offer thousands of online courses, helping you to learn in a fun, interactive way. I was most interested in the quantum mechanics section, but of course, you can also learn about chemistry. Even for everyday life, learning about STEM fields can give you the upper hand. You don't need to go to college to acquire this basic level of wisdom, and learning is actually fun because of their learn by doing approach. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash thylabs or click the link in the video description. The first 200 of you who sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Okay, let's get back to the experiments. Thermite versus ice. Our journey to uncover the mystery behind thermite explosions on ice began with a simple question. Why does it happen? Through a series of experiments, we set out to unravel the truth for your viewing pleasure. But what did we discover? Initially, I thought that the extreme heat caused by the thermites may result in a steam explosion. However, when we tested thermite on frozen cyclohexane, that theory was somewhat disproven. Next, we considered the possibility of hydrogen and oxygen being produced due to the high temperature. But even with sugar, which behaves similarly to water when heated, no explosion occurred. So what is the actual cause of the massive explosion? My conclusion is that it's a combination of a steam explosion and an oxyhydrogen detonation. It appears that as the thermite reacts with the ice, some of the ice melts to form water which quickly evaporates and simultaneously the water decomposes into oxygen and hydrogen. These then ignite and rapidly react to form back water again. This process causes the molten metal to break into smaller bits and as the surface area of the metal and the water increases, the process is accelerated and an explosion occurs. If you have a better theory, make sure to write the comments, because I'm curious. As we still had dry ice and Elias brought some magnesium, I wanted to show you some special thermite before simply cutting the video short. These are magnesium turnings below a layer of dry ice. The carbon dioxide reacts as an oxidizing agent and the magnesium is reducing the carbon dioxide to form magnesium oxide and elemental carbon. This reaction is pretty neat because otherwise carbon dioxide is used in fire extinguishers and so you wouldn't be able to extinguish a magnesium fire using carbon dioxide. I hope you liked today's video, if you did make sure to subscribe and also make sure to check out the channel of Elias Experiments and Advanced Thinkering. You can find the link down in the description. I would also like to thank my Patreons and if you want to become a Patreon too, make sure to check the link in the description. I wish all of you a great day. See you in the next video.